Hi. Uh, so, I guess I'm just making this video to show off uh, a cool little project that I made for my high school chemistry teacher. So, um, I just want to start off with explaining what the problem was. So, uh, every couple weeks or so, uh, my chemistry teacher would want to switch up the seating chart um, just to mix things up, and she sort of had uh, some criteria of what she wanted the seating chart to look like. So there are like six main criteria. The first criteria is that um, students who request to sit in front of the class uh, get to sit in front. Students with low scores sit closer to the front. Um, there's an alternating boy and girl uh, seating. So she tries to pair boys and girls together uh, next to each other. Uh, she tries to sit people with new people, so no two people sit next to each other uh, twice, or are the same seat, seating partners. And uh, the lower scores sit in front, oh I already said that, okay. Uh, actually, okay, so there's two criterias. One is there's a high score that sits with a low score, so if you scored really well on the last test, you're probably going to sit next to someone who scored really low on the last test. Uh, but if you're sort of middle in the road, you're probably going to be paired up with someone who's also sort of middle in the road. Uh, so only the very highest scores will sit with the very lowest scores. Um, and then the lower scored people will generally try, she'll try to sit them closer to the front. Uh, and the last criteria is she doesn't want people who sat in the fourth column to sit in the fourth column again, if they already sat there before. Because uh, I guess the fourth column, it's sort of, not the best place to sit. It's because uh, she has to move chairs around it when uh, setting up for labs. And the fourth column guys, they have to like move to a different table when doing labs. So not everyone wants to sit there all the time. It's not really a good place. So this uh, whole app is built in uh, uh, React JS. So it's all JavaScript stuff. Uh, so what you can do here is she can download a CSV file uh, online from. Uh, I don't know, some attendance website or the school website. So she will have this CSV, so like a student roster. So I have uh, some sample test test data right here. Wait, let me close. Oh, okay. uh, and sample test scores. So I can load both of these, both of these files. Uh, press load students, and as you can see, all the students in the spreadsheet are loaded up in this table. And uh, what we could do is we could just go ahead and press sort students. And what it'll do is you can actually see uh, the algorithm working and trying to move people around until it converges to some uh, solution that it, it, it thinks is good enough. Uh, and we can see progress right here. So it's like, okay, 100% done now. Okay, so let's see how good of a job this actually did. Uh, so. The notation here is it's called one two three four five six. Uh, F E D E C B A are the uh, rows. So it, the A row is the first row from the front. So this is from the perspective of the teacher, and the F row is the row in the back. Uh, okay, and there's three uh, pieces of data on each of these uh, table table blocks. Uh, first is just their name. Uh, actually, there's four pieces of data. Uh, just their name, uh, their gender, so female or male, uh, their last test score, so higher is better. Uh, and then some of these guys, they're bolded. The bolded guys are people who requested to sit in front. So uh, as you can see, not everyone who requested to sit in front are at the very front, but uh, the algorithms still try to get them close to the front, so within like the first two rows. So uh, I would say like that's pretty good. If you ask to be in the front and you're within the first two rows, that's pretty good. Uh, okay, so we first want to make sure that let's see. Okay, so people who requested to sit in front are generally in the front, which is true. Okay, so that's good. Uh, high scoring students are with low scoring students. Let's check if that is true. ABD just means like they uh, they like did not take it for whatever reason, like they ha they were sick or something. Uh, so. I just count that as zero. Uh, so 105, that's like one of the highest scores here, is paired with zero, that's good. Uh, 85, relatively high score, paired with 12, it's a pretty low score, so that's good. 
uh, score of 2, which is very low, is paired with 95, which is good. 100 is paired with 20, it's pretty good. 90 is paired with 10, 5 is paired with 92. So generally, it looks like uh, this. Oh, also the seating partners, uh, they're by 2. So uh, Avilia, Jacob, and Chen, and Brianna, they're actually not seating partners. Uh, there's a little separation between every two columns. So column one and two, these guys will be seating partners. Column three and four will be seating partners. And column five and six are going to be seating partners. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so Avilia and Brianna actually will, will really will not be sitting next to each other. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it generally looks like it's, big, it's doing a good job. So, like, okay, 15 with an 80, 82 with a 22, 30 with 70. And then as you go farther back, uh, it gets a little bit more middle of the road, where it's like 50-65, it's a little bit more split up, uh, which is fine. And uh, I think that's because uh, we want low scores to sit in front. So generally, okay, so these are really low scores, like 5, 10, 12, ABD, 20, 2, 15, uh, 20, 2, 30 is relatively slow. And the guys in the back are less low. Some of, there's some low, like 25, 32, but they're not as low as some of the lows in the fronts, which is good. Uh, the highs are have to be in the front because uh, we we prioritize uh, high sitting with lows more than we prioritize lows scoring in the front, uh, low scores sitting in the front. Uh, yeah. Okay. And another thing we want to check for is the the gender mix up. So so far it's doing a pretty good job. So a uh, female sitting with a male, female, male, uh, male, female, uh, female, male, male, female, male, female, male, female, male, female. Okay, so it's pretty much, uh, okay, this is an empty seat. That's another criteria. So so that was another tricky thing that I had to do was uh, she, my teacher, uh, uh, picks empty seats, sort of, not arbitrarily, but like there's certain empty seats like in the middle of the seating chart that, will that she'll choose to remove based on the number of students so for example if there's like uh let's see one two three four five six one two three four okay so if there's like 35 students this is the empty seat that will choose but if there's like uh i don't know like 32 students then this whole block is gone like this whole quarter is gone but if there's like 33 students she takes like one empty seat from like three blocks of four because each block of four is sort of like a like a group uh, so that was another little tricky thing to do. So the empty seats, uh, they're, I just assigned them a score of like the average, average score. So like they don't really affect any of the score stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it's pretty much done a perfect job of putting all the males and females, like alternating them, which is good. Uh, okay. So the other criteria is you can't really see because this is the first seating chart, so you can't really see if they're not sitting with new people or they're not sitting in column four again or something like that. But uh, the way we can do this is we could actually, okay, so if she wants to, she could just export this table, right? And uh, she clicks on this table. She could just uh, show this to all her stu students and, and uh, basically tell them where to sit uh, using the spreadsheet. So, okay, but also, uh, one thing she could do is she could export the history of this uh, table generation. And uh, next time, like she wants to make a second seating chart. Uh, okay, let me find this. Oops, long one. Okay, so she has this history file. I'm just gonna put it in this folder. My computer's being really slow. Okay, she can put it in that folder. Okay. That she can load the history okay uh, and then if she tries to sort the students again oh actually yes sorry she have to load the students first no, I stop this okay I'll just let it run this course but uh yeah actually I have to I have to load this again because the history has to be loaded okay okay so I loaded the students and now you see, like, there's some red boxes. So if I sort this again, uh, what the red boxes mean is those are students who sat in column four before. So what it's going to try to do is try to avoid any of these students from sitting in column four again. Uh, but we actually give this a pretty low priority. It's a priority of one versus a priority of 400 for students sitting in the front row. 
the request to be seated in the front row. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so as you can see, I sort of assign weights to each of these criteria, and uh, my teacher, you know, if she if she wants to prioritize something, because there might be a combination where it's impossible to create a perfect seating chart. So, uh, what she could do is alter these weights to sort of, you know, uh, say what what thing she she wants to prioritize if she has to make like a compromise on something. Uh, so okay, let's see this again. Uh, so it's generally doing a pretty good job sitting, uh, you know, meeting all our past criteria. Uh, but also, as you can see, uh, all the red guys they're they're not sitting in column four anymore. And I don't know if you pause the video and go back, you could, maybe you can also see that you know there's not really any people who are sitting next to the same person. They're a little bit. It's like different. Uh, you have different seating partners, hopefully. You know, uh, how much we give that priority priority of a hundred, so it's going to prioritize it, the other things first. But uh, yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, I, I I want to talk about a little bit about uh, maybe yeah the weights. Okay, so I already talked about the weights. Uh, so the way I did this is using a genetic algorithm. Uh, so it, it basically tries to create a score and uh, evaluate how good of a seating chart something is. So what I try to do first is, uh, based on these criteria, I try to automatically, uh, what, manually, well not manually, like programmatically, uh, like create an initial seating chart that should be pretty good, pretty close to like a, a good solution. And then what I do from there is I use a genetic algorithm to sort of like mutate that uh, pretty good seating chart and try to find something that's slightly better and then build off of that slightly better table. Uh, and it just keep mutating until it gets better and better and better. Uh, and uh, what what this is, is you can alter uh, the population size. So population size is uh, how many different alternate uh, seating charts it, it generates from uh, from the previous generation. So it'll, it'll generate up to like a certain amount of uh, seating charts and then it'll kill all the other seating charts. And you only have 40 left in the population. I'll keep iterating like that. And uh, the timeout is just how how long in seconds are you gonna let this keep running? Because uh, like it'll just keep running, and, and it won't know if it like actually find the optimal solution. It'll probably just like find some like local maxima, and just like stay there. So you have so that's what the timeout's for. And then the mutations per child is just how many sort of different uh, different like swaps are you gonna try from from like the base parent uh, sitting chart. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, anyways, hope you found this interesting, and thank you for listening. Okay, bye.